Welcome to my review and thoughts on the 2023 Blue Beetle movie. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. This movie will have some jokes, none at the expense of members of minorities, and I will get into some serious topics. Before I get any further, please go into the description box. The top link is to donate to the SAC After Strikers, extremely important strike. They deserve all you can spare. There's also some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. Now, if you're looking for a review that talks about it's different from the source material or others in the DCU, so it sucks. Whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. And the... Let's see, right. I realize this video is long. I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where... I'm probably not going to spoil anything. If I do decide to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn you, hold up an index finger, so you can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. I will not be warning for spoilers for earlier entries in the DCEU. And as soon as I review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for the movie, including discussing the ending in detail. So, this movie is rated PG-13, and it is one of the movies that push the PG-13. Not quite as much as, like, some of the more recent... <sighs> some of the more recent MCU stuff has really, really pushed the PG-13. But this one does have some stuff that's, that's pretty intense. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't show it to someone who wasn't at least 13. And, you know, the, the IMDb Parents Guide does have some details for, you know, so you can do some some research, some, some actual research, not, the, not what people say when they're saying they're doing their own research about, like, COVID or something. And I think... I think that is going to pretty much cover. So yeah, I've watched the movie once. I just got back from the theater before I hit record. And let's see. I think, yes, so the plot. The, the, um, yeah, gonna be quoting from IMDb here. An alien relic chooses Jaime Reyes to be its symbiotic, symbiotic host, bestowing the teenager with a suit of armor that's capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers, forever changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero Blue Beetle. And, let's see, the, um, Yeah, so this was this was written by Gareth Dunne Al Cocher. And I have to admit, I don't know, I'm not familiar with anything else that he's he you know, before this he he wrote that he he yeah, a a bunch of what he's written are shorts. Some of and and he's also directed several of the shorts that he wrote and a couple that he didn't write and other than this the only other feature that he's written was something from 2019 called Miss Bala unfortunately it is not that high rated on IMDb so there's some chance that it's not absolutely amazing um, I mean Ah, it's yeah, it's based on a Spanish language film, so it's it's an it's an English language remake, and those are frequently not very good. So yeah, I feel bad. It's like Thomas Decker is actually in it, and you know I'd really like to see him in something again. Been you know I, I really really liked the the stuff he did in you know yeah his work on Heroes and and he was amazing on the Sarah Connor Chronicles and then it was just 
yeah, haven't haven't really seen him in a, in anything in a while. But I guess since the end of Sarokana Chronicles. So what I'm getting to is the the I can't really com I I don't know if this is like typical for Gareth's writing. It doesn't really feel like it's only the second feature that he's like it it feels like he, he it's it's very self-assured writing. I would definitely say by the end of it, I felt like I had gotten a handle on every major character. You know, there there was at least one where I kept not quite being sure what are they doing with this character? Who is this person? And <clears throat> just there would be hints, you know, it would it would I just kept worrying it wouldn't add up. And before the movie was over, I felt like I knew what yeah, what what drove that character and yeah, they they do quite a good job on that and the you know, there's even a couple of characters that you might not think you're going to be asked to feel anything for. It seems like they're there to serve a very specific purpose for the plot, and a lot of the way that's true. But they did actually, they do get some character characterization as well, you know, and yeah, I, I quite appreciated that. Now... There's a lot of jokes in this movie, and I am going to be perfectly honest. I think about a third of them, I felt like you could kind of just remove this stuff. There's a lot of, you know, I'm a big fan of the MCU, but I will 100% grant there's an over-reliance on humor in a number of those movies, and... Yeah, this very much, you know, the DCU has always been, like, it's very, like, for a while it was trying to be the edgy older brother of the MCU, and then for, you know, it became pretty clear, okay, that's not going to work. It's not drawing in the numbers they want. So then they started kind of, like, imitating the MCU in a number of ways, and, yeah, this is... There's a lot going, there's a lot in this movie that feels like it's something that they got from, from the MCU. I do think some of the jokes are great, and I don't think that there was, you know, I don't know if it's even possible, but I, I probably wouldn't ever feel that there was too much of, you know, the, the very specific cultural thing. You know, I, I know some people really did not. I don't want to think that all of them are racist. I'm trying not to think that, you know, it definitely, there's there's a, um, the, the movie has personality, and it's not really ashamed of the the identity that it has at all and I think most of the time that's a good thing you know this like this stands out so much more than the last several when was the last time when okay I it's not that the DCEU has never had a movie with this much personality and identity. I guess the Suicide Squad was probably the last time there was one. But but yeah, you know, Flash, Shazam Two, and Black Adam just don't quite. Though there was, I, I will definitely say this reminded me. You know, Black Adam. It's the the kind of um, what's the word? This sort of Eastern Mi Middle Eastern kind of identity for for a lot of it, and and this movie Blue Beetle is that you know is similar to Black Adam in that respect, just with 
the Latino culture instead. But yeah, the the I think that is pretty much what I have to say about that. It it definitely like I've there's times where there's just too much like the jingling keys in the audience's faces. There's there's a number of jokes I wouldn't I, I don't agree that it's like the majority of some I've I've seen at least one user review say but there are definitely some that are very child oriented um and for sure like there's there's a handful of times where just if the movie could just you, you know you're at a 10 I'd love you to be at a 2 just just and it's not it's not the the Latino thing. It's just the fact, like the movie. Everyone is talking, and a lot of a lot of words are being said, and not a lot of meaning is being conveyed. It's just people reacting. Like there's this um, the first time that Jaime transforms. You know, you can understand why because it's it's very intense looking, but like everyone gets at least one reaction shot and at least one like some of them get a line some of them just get to to deliver like a scream or a yell that's really you know really stands out and it just felt like you know you're really you're really milking this thing and i don't think it's quite working as as much with that said the the family is one of the best parts and honestly like that's an area where it's it's somewhat like the first Shazam movie the 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 supportive family and and this kind of just you know that adds a lot and the family the the culture and the way that they just yeah there's there's a lot of backstory there there's a lot that has happened that we haven't seen and we're just like seeing the people that were shaped by all that, all that they had to go through, and yeah, the movie does really well. That's that's the thing. Like, if you, I mean, if you're watching this in a movie theater, I don't know if you're necessarily gonna want to walk out. I suppose you'll have to go off, you know, hearing people talk about. But yeah, if the family is not really working for you the movie is probably not for you. It's just, it's it's going to be grating. And that's something, I, I saw a couple of user reviews that were just, they, they hated it. They felt like it was the worst thing ever. And it's basically because the, the you know, and the family, they're a lot, you know, and they're supposed to be. Like, that's, you know, there's this running gag that, you know, yeah, it's great that they're supportive, but they're also kind of cringy and embarrassing for for Jaime. But yeah, um, you know, I'm I really appreciate when one of these movies dares to have a heart. You know, this one does. The first Shazam did. Just really, really appreciate when it's you know, and it's and it's wearing its heart on its sleeve. Just yeah, I think that is. A about what I have to say about right so um, yeah there are some plot twists I don't think there are too many and I liked all of them I think an argument could be made that at least one of them is perhaps a tad easy to, to figure out but it's not like a big deal it's not something where the movie is expecting you to be completely like devastated and you're not now this was directed by okay I'm going to go ahead I, I haven't been able to find but I think you pronounce it Angel Manuel Soto because he is from Puerto Rico um, yeah I am not familiar with anything else that he's made but um yeah he's yeah a bunch of what he's made are shorts but before this he did also direct 
Charm City Kings. Let's see. A, yeah, it's about a 14 year old who wants to be part of an infamous group of Baltimore dirt bike riders who rule the summertime streets. So, yeah, I, honestly, I was very impressed with this movie. I might actually check that out. And he directed some of a mini series called Menudo Forever Young, which, yeah, yeah. Um, the boy band, you know. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah. So the, the IMDb of a riveting four part docuseries chronicling the untold story behind the rise and fall of Menudo, the most iconic Latin American boy band in history. So, you know, he is clearly, he cares about telling these stories, you know, that are about the, the, yeah. Huh. He, d he did something called Inside Trump's America. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and one of the shorts he made has a very, very telling title. I Struggle Where You Vacation. You know, so this is something that... You know, he's not, he, they, they didn't, like, dump this in his lap. This is the kind of thing he likes. To, he, he thrives on telling stories about immigrants succeeding despite the, the pressure and the, and, yeah, he was the exact right person to direct this. And I think that is about... Yeah, so I'm gonna real quick rank. So the the yeah ranking all DCEU movies other than this one at the end of the review I'll update this ranking with where I place this one. Uh, but but yeah, uh, I love Shazam two and all I mentioned after that one, Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman 1984, Snyder Cut, 2016 Suicide Squad. 2017 Justice League, Man of Steel, Black Adam, Shazam 2, The Flash, Wonder Woman 1, Aquaman, Shazam 1, Birds of Prey, 2021 Suicide Squad. And yeah, so this is the second to last pre-DCU, which is what the James Gunn, you know, taking over after the DCU crashed and burned. Is going to be called Aquaman is the very last, and supposedly the Blue Beetle Jaime Reyes will be in the DCU films. Though this particular movie is not part of the continuity, you know this this one is going to be retconned. I really do hope that they keep around. Okay, I'm gonna try Sh Sholo Maridueña as Jaime Reyes, because he is amazing. He is just completely perfect for the role, and just, yeah, really, really, you know, I've, I've heard before that, you know, that he's really good in, in other stuff, and, uh, you know, yeah, been hoping that he would appear in something I watched. He's, you know, a lot of people love him on, I want to say it's called... You know what, I'm going to, so I'm not, so, yeah, Cobra Kai. A lot of people say he's, he's really amazing on that. So, yeah, the, the, let's see. Right, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, for those who might not be aware there are, you know, the Blue Beetle is a mantle for multiple, you know, there, there are three um, iterations of the, the yeah, um, so, yeah, Dan Garrett, Ted Cord, and Jaime Reyes, and I, uh, right, and, and yeah, so the original 
was in 1939, and 2006 was when Jaime Reyes was introduced, and, you know, I, yes, just real quick, you know, there's probably some recency bias for them choosing Jaime, I'm really glad that they did choose the one who wasn't just a white dude, like, anyone who thinks we still need more comic book movies where the protagonist is a white dude, like, how many do you need? It's ridiculous how many of we have them. We gotta get more diversity, so I really appreciate this. And for those who, you know, really, really hate when you introduce a character and you don't choose the first person who held the, the mantle, the other two are referenced multiple times. And in fact, the movie has some really, really great... It, it's not like just a throwaway. No, there's... It's a it's a significant aspect of this movie is the respect it pays to the originals because you know I know there's a bunch of white fans who freak out at the idea of a non-white person not showing enough respect for the white guy so that's <sighs> anyway but but yeah they work it in really really well and just yeah, in incredible stuff, and the the I th I think they handled it incredibly well. So I have some critic quotes. So some say it feels like it was made in the '80s, but with modern effects. Very true. It's very much about family, something important to the Latino community. Latinos will love the cultural stuff. A lot of obvious jokes that were okay. Some subtle ones that were amazing. Susan Randon was just cashing a check. The villains were meh, another origin story, but I still liked it. Will move you emotionally more than once? Absolutely true, yeah. Wants to be Cronenberg for kids. Yeah, that's... I, I would like to know what Cronenberg thinks of these PG-13 pretenders to... Because, to, like, he's not, you know... It's not like he can't take jokes about his his works. You know, he, like, there's, a, clearly that's not a problem. But it, it must, like, in, in recent years, you have multiple movies that are PG-13. They might be pushing it, but they try to invoke... Cronenberg, you know, in addition to the, like, the most prominent I am thinking of is the the 2015 Fantastic Four, or Fant Four Stick. You know, just like, clearly they, they you know, they want to go in the direction of Cronenberg, but they're not working with an R rating, and it just feels very, very awkward, but I, I kind of respect, yeah, and right, one person said it was like Paul Verhoeven's Robocop in tone, that's very true, there's a lot of that going on, and uh, right, um, yeah, when the, when one of the trailers hit, a bunch of conservatives freaked out at the, the line Batman's a fascist, and, you know, others have already pointed out, but I, I feel it bears repeating, they're not saying that that's actually the case. It's a joke. It's a line delivered by a character frequently referred to as Uncle Rudy, played by George Lopez, and... This character is ridiculous. Like, he's he's constantly saying really ridiculous things. Like, he's basically really, really paranoid. So, you know, if anything, the movie's making fun of the idea of Batman being a fascist. I'll grant that it was not the most... Like, the the including it in the trailer, because, like... When we hear that line in the movie, we've been with this character for a while, so we know that him saying that is ridiculous. You know, I, so I, I, I can't believe I'm actually going to give some 
mild credit to conservatives. <sighs> yeah, I I don't know. I guess hell froze over. But no, the 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 movie is not trying to convince the audience that Batman is a fascist. Now, I think that is yeah, so the the um, a lot of aspects of the movie feel very like there's there's fairly little in the movie that we've never seen before, though the the um, you know in in one single I, I don't know any one single movie that has everything that this does. And again, I do really appreciate, for example, the, the cultural aspects. You know, it's a movie that really appreciates the, the trials of the, the Latin American immigrant in America. You know, that they talk about crossing the border. They talk about working 16-hour days, you know, struggling to get by and, you know, never giving up. There's this repeated... Um, let's see, I believe it, I'm, I'm going to have it momentarily, because I, yeah, they, they, on, on a number of occasions, the, you know, someone in the Reyes family says animo, which, you know, Google Translate says, basically means cheer up. You know, I, I'm not one of, you know, I watched it with Danish subtitles, so I, I don't, yeah, cheer up, that, that is, I guess, how you would translate it from, from the Danish. I'm going to go with Google Translate instead of trying to, yeah, but the, and I just realized I haven't really talked, so, so yeah, Jaime is, is our protagonist, he, you know, he just graduated college and he's back to you know yeah goes back to to his home where his both of his parents his his uncle i believe it's the father's brother and his own sister Jaime's sister Milagro and the the grandmother i'm not 100% certain if it's the father's or the mother's mother but yeah and all of them are very very supportive and really try well you know milagro is a you know angsty teenager i'm not sure if she's a teenager so she might be like 20 or something but you know yeah she's she's not necessarily the most supportive but the other ones uh, are and and she's not like really really unpleasant or something she just and yeah you know they the the various characters talk about the the struggles they've they've had to face which again is something that some of the conservatives have absolutely lost their minds over you know and it's the usual just like every single time i see that just like if you don't like the message that's being put out in the world try to change you know if like obviously it's frustrating if it's a lie you know and then you try to do what you can to to spread the truth to counteract that but if the message being sent out is the truth if the truth bothers you don't be mad at the people spreading the truth try to actually fix the situation so that people will no longer be talking about you know just anyway um i think that is about it for that aspect so the the yeah you know it's so various inspirations like Venom, there is this thing of like the 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 scarab has this symbiotic thing going on, and you know it speaks, and the only person who can hear 
the the voice of Kaji Da, uh, portrayed by Becky G, is Jaime himself. Right. I just realized I I so I didn't mention all the the actors yet. So so Milagro is played by Belisa Escobedo. Nana is played. The, the grandmother is played by Adriana Barraza. The father is played by Damian Alcadar. Let's see. The mother is played by Elpidia Carrillo. And I think that covers. Yeah. So and and the yeah the the um. So so yeah, you've got the you've got the venom thing in there. And yeah, there are some tropes that feel like they're from, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Something that might have been in, like, the Ghost Rider or the, the movie, not one of the TV appearances or something. You know, just, I, th I think it's a lot better than the, the you know, yeah, than Ghost Rider or Venom. But I, I feel silly claiming that... It didn't seem like they got some inspiration from there. And let's see. So I've yeah, I've mentioned the other DCEU ones that Yeah, so the the special effects are good, not like amazing, and you know, it's one of those things like I don't like criticizing special effects at a time when they don't have a proper trade union. You know, so I'm hoping that that'll happen. If, you know, the the it is definitely like I was a little unsure of what to expect, considering that originally this was just going to go to streaming, and then like someone decided, no, let's let's give it a full theatrical release. You know, there's definitely some times where the pacing. Kind of, you know, you can tell, okay, they did not think that this would be a big... Like, there's this part... It happens fairly early on, and this... I'm, I'll keep it vague enough that it's not a spoiler, but there's, like... <sighs> at least one of the good guys ends up in a situation that, like, turns into a very, very short action scene, and then there's a while before there's really much action again... And it's the kind of thing where you can tell they kind of, you know, they were so far along that they couldn't really have changed, you know, once once they, they couldn't have turned it into a bigger action scene once they found out that they were getting a theatrical release. And then, on the other hand, I can imagine that the first transformation and flight that was probably expanded once they got, like, a bigger budget. And it's the kind of thing you could easily see, you know, like, as it is in the movie now, like, you know, he, he transforms and then he flies up, you know, he, he, uh, I'm no good with space terms. He breaches the atmosphere, I guess. And, you know, it was like up in, in space, you know, just past the, you know, and then he goes back down, you know, um, re-entry kind of thing I can imagine that that either it might just not have been there or it might have been like less detailed you know originally and yeah like it it fares surprisingly well for for the for this sudden kind of you know Increase in in yeah. Now the action scenes, a lot of the time, are very special effects driven. They're good. They're not like amazing. You know, there's there's a lot better. Uh, you know what what it has that does. You know the the personality comes through in the action scenes as well. And you know so so yeah you know. Chunks of it are basically special effects. However, unlike some movies, you know, I just rewatched Ant Man Quantumania, you know, that one definitely, like, you can really tell, okay, they shot this on the volume, you know, 
there's no you don't really get a sense of where things start and end this most of the action was filmed on physical sets so yeah you know like the the special effects not the the best thing in the world but they did actually like throw a stunt guy through the air you know they did actually like knock over a car and these various things that happen you know and that really adds to it that there's there's a visceral kind of it you you can tell there's something physically happening you know similar to how if you know if there's a scene where like a building is blowing up it can have a stronger effect on the audience if you use models than if you use CG purely so so that was a really really good choice uh, I would say this is one of those cases where like I'm glad that the action is not the only draw the movie has because the action definitely is not quite as strong as the the just scenes of the family reacting to things and and trying to to work things out and such you know that's clearly where Angel the director put his focus and that is where the movie is strongest you know this is one of those things like there's some action movies where you know, it's like, I don't know, I don't feel like sitting through the entire thing. Can we, can we just, like, fast forward through everything that isn't an action scene? This is not, this is almost like the opposite kind of thing, you know. And, yeah, thankfully the movie realizes this and actually really focuses on the stuff that works the, the best. And... Thing. Right, so I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. I think the ending is quite good. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so there are there's one mid credit scene and one post credit scene. You don't have to stay through the end credits for the post credit scene. It's not you're not gonna be kicking yourself if you leave the theater early and miss it. Like, I wasn't unhappy that I, you know, the, the credits weren't that long, but it's not something that you need to. The mid credit scene, you are probably going to want to hear. I don't know if it's gonna have the intended effect on account of... Just the, the way things are right now. Like, it, you can tell that it was made at a time when certain things were in a different... So, so yeah, you know, it is the kind of thing where you might want to... You might prefer to not watch it and just later, you know, watch someone summarize what it is or something. Now, I have not read any Blue Beetle myself. I haven't really, like, it's not that I've been, like, avoiding or anything. Um, yeah, just, I, you know, I don't think there's ever really been, in, in the years that I read comic books, which was between 1999 and 2007, I don't think there really was any... Blue Beetle book that was like, yeah, so I guess, yeah, uh, like hypothetically, if I would have, it would almost have had to have been one of the other, either Dan Garrett or uh, Ted Cord, and that, like, I wouldn't have had a problem with that, but maybe they weren't that big here in Denmark at that time. Now, this is one of those where, like, it's not a spoiler to say that Blue Beetle can basically, yeah, there's there's actually, at, at one point, I'm going to see if I can get the number, yeah, Kajida does say, and I believe this is a direct quote, anything you can think of, I can create. This does a lot better 
with that than the Ryan Reynolds Green, Ga Green Lantern movie. And I, I specify Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie because I'm hoping that maybe you're watching this at some point in the future and when I say Green Lantern, if I didn't specify Ryan Reynolds, you might think, oh, does he mean the Ryan Reynolds one? Or does he mean that really good one? That's what I'm hoping for. I'm, I'm trying to manifest. So, this does better than that movie, which is not a high bar, but it really doesn't that it doesn't do that much, and it's you know the thing is they when they when they were writing it they thought they would have a fairly low budget they thought or comparatively not not like it's nine grand or something but they didn't expect like a movie a, a, um, yeah movie theater release budget kind of you know so they kind of did have to just go with something relatively speaking small and you know not every movie has to be huge but when your ability like that's 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 the thing that he can do you know Jaime Reyes according to this movie you know anything that any any weapon you can think of the suit can create and they really don't do that much with it and that's you know that's too bad um, it's only because it's it's a I, I wouldn't be it wouldn't really I, I wouldn't mind so much if not for the fact that it is just it's the it's the character's deal is that he can do this you know like imagine watching a an X-Men movie and Wolverine's a big part but he almost never unsheathes his claws like you know the the effects weren't equally good across all the movies but I think we can all agree they did they delivered when when Wolverine was in, was in a lot of an X-Men movie he unsheathed the claws you know in in like memorable and and cool ways and yeah that's something where this just doesn't quite yeah um now Jaime comes into you know gets the the ah, gets the the beetle because Jenny Cord played by Runa Marquezine, you know, she's working at the, the company that has the beetle, and yeah, she, you know, gets it into his hands, and there's, you know, there's a bit of a relationship between the two, and, you know, it's not like the best I've ever seen, but I felt like they did a, a pretty good job. Uh, both both of them can act. They have some chemistry, at least. I, it wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's like the best. It's not like uh, Tony and Pepper or, you know, Peter and Gwen or, or that kind of thing, you know. And... Yeah, so Susan Sarandon plays the main villain, Victoria Cord, or Vicky Cord. And yeah, I, f I feel bad for, you know, it's, it's one of those things, like, please don't judge her acting talent based on this movie. You know, watch one of the the classic movies that she's in, you know. Watch Thelma and Louise, uh, you know, if the, the, um, yeah, just, there's, there's, um, there's a number of things that she's in where she really shows that she's incredibly talented, and I think it's one of those things, like, you know, at this point, 
you know, she's not getting the kinds of offers that she used to, and yeah, it probably was just, you know, yeah, a, you know, a paycheck, a way to, to keep her name in circulation, keep people from forgetting, but, you know, you can tell that she didn't, she wasn't that passionate about it, and the character's not that compelling. There's a little bit of depth to her, but it comes fairly late in the film. Yeah, it's it's too bad. I I haven't seen her in much recent stuff, and I do appreciate, you know, like acting takes a lot out of you, so you're not going to be, you know... We, we can't expect someone to deliver the kind of performance, you know when they're when they're like middle aged or, or so as they could when they were in their twenties or thirties or something. And I, I, I don't mean to be ageist, but just you know I hope I'm not coming across as that. That's certainly not I have tremendous respect for old people. And I'm not saying that she's like old. Um I wish that they had. I I I can imagine that she would have risen to the occasion if the role had been like really deeply compelling. But just you know, like this is not the the. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, but the the villain from the first Jazam, you know, he's really compelling, and yeah, Victoria Cord just not really. Now. Yeah, so Harvey Guillen plays Dr. Sanchez, works for Victoria, and I don't have a lot to say about him that isn't a spoiler. I'll just say that I, I did like his, his presence. Ra Raul Ma Ma Trujillo plays Carapax, and he, you know, it's basically the, the, you know, he's the, he's the very, he's the right hand of the, the villain. You, you wouldn't think, like, it seems like it's just a uh, pretty bland character, and I wouldn't say that he gets to act for that much of his screen time, but he does bring a presence that really i'm i'm really really glad that they did manage you know because he does like he's the, they they're doing the thing they're doing the thing where the villain has powers that are almost like those of the hero and you know obviously they're going to fight and for a number of these one of the things is like you might have a talented actor, but there may be not the best, like, physical presence, and Raul really does deliver on the physical presence, and that's another, you know, I mentioned earlier that the action scenes are clearly shot on actual, you know, in actual physical places, not just, like, in a green screen studio, and, yeah, Raul really, really adds to that with his physical presence, and I think I think that is going to do it for the characters. So, yeah, so the, the cinematography, there's definitely, there's some really good stuff, uh, you know, but a, a lot of the time. It's, it's somewhat, I would definitely say it is doing what it can. It, it's, it understands that, you know, we came to watch a movie. It's, it's not just, you know, if, if, like, if all we wanted to see were, like, special effects and there wasn't any, you know, like, there's, a lot of YouTube videos where you can go to just see cool special effects, you know, but yeah, like we want to see something 
you know, cinematic. And the, yeah, so the cinematography is handled by Paul Pogorzelski, uh, the cinematographer of Hereditary and Midsommar. So, yeah. And, right, and, and fresh. Um, there's, yeah, and, and you can, you can see there's, there's some shots that are very striking uh, in, in this. You know, I, I don't know if, the the you know for for this superhero thing i don't know if it's the most if if he would have been like my first choice but he no there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's that's filmed really well the editing was handled by craig alpert and yeah, he has 23 total editing credits. He edited Deadpool 2, and I guess nothing else that I really. Okay, yeah. So he's yes, a bunch of what he's edited is like comedies, um, Pitch Perfect. Uh, let's see, two and three. Not sure he did one. Um, do little. I feel like rough night. I think that is a, a comedy. Pop star. I am not going to read the rest of that title. It's so, such a silly title. Um, Ride along the campaign. The that one where um, Will Ferrell and Zach between two ferns. Galif, Galif, Galifianakis, I think it's, I'm not trying to make fun of him, I just, I'm not, I don't usually talk about stuff that he's in, um, I don't have any problem with him, he's, he seems funny, um, I, I get why people keep watching him and, and stuff, but, but yeah, um, yeah, I think it does make sense Considering how much of this movie is comedy, I think it makes a lot of sense for the editor to be someone who's used to comedies. And, you know, I already mentioned that maybe like a third of the jokes I felt, you know, didn't need to be there. But certainly, like, if, you know, part of, part of what this movie is supposed to be is a vehicle for jokes a a gag machine gun and yeah it does do that you know yeah it it's quite capable when it comes to that and um yeah uh, he he handles the action well I'm not sure I would say that I ever really lost track, which is, you know, that's one area where, like, action editing is very important to, to yeah, and the, um, yeah, there aren't really any scenes that should, like, have been trimmed down or yeah now the budget was between 104 and 125 million dollars and largely that shows and it is filmed in Puerto Rico Los Angeles and Georgia and they get some some quite good, uh, you know. There's a there's a sense of place because of that. And you know, and it's something like it really gets across how important the the home is to this this family. And you know, I mean, that might sound obvious. Of course, your home is important to you. Especially if you don't have the money to, you know, you know they're they're really strapped for cash. But there's a lot of superhero movies where, like, 
I don't really get that strong a sense of, you know, I don't know, do does the protagonist care that much about their home, you know, did, is it is it important to them, is it significant to them, you know, as maybe more than just a physical place that protects them from, you know, the, the, the bad kind of exposure. Okay, the other bad kind, not not social media exposure, you know, the, the, but yeah, in, in this movie, like, you really, because, you know, again, like, they mention, you know, work 16 hour 16 hours a day, you know, they, they don't have much, but what they have is theirs, and it's something they can share with the family, and, and because of that, when something happens in their home, it feels significant, you know, and I, I thought they did that, did a really great job with, with that, like, it, the home is not just a setting in, in this movie. So, the, yeah, so the, the I, I talked a little about the action already, I haven't talked that much about, like, the kind of, yeah, the, the types, you know, so there's some, there's some chasing, there's a lot of use of the the superpowers, you know, which, yeah, Jaime has the, the blue beetle suit, but the, you know, the villain right hand, Carapax, has a, a somewhat similar, you know, skills, uh, you know, yeah, ability kind of thing, and there's um, a good amount of just them using their abilities and such there's also some scenes where you know for whatever reason superpowers are not involved and there's like some close-up fighting you know there's yeah there's people shooting you know firing guns and and just yeah let's see So the the music there's a lot of great needle drops in this. It's it's a very enthusiastic bombastic soundtrack. You know, honestly, like this is the kind of, like I wouldn't rule out like getting the soundtrack for this, you know. It's not James Gunn, you know, it's not a a Guardians of the Galaxy film. It's not the Suicide Squad. And I think there are a couple of times where it wishes it were, and that did feel a little bit like I, I just didn't think it it completely worked. And not because of the music. I I you know I really appreciated how much of the music was actually Latino music. And then they they do a couple of there's at least one cover. You know, they, they do a Spanish cover of Be My Baby, which, you know, I've mentioned in other videos, really, really love. You know, it's used in Barbarian, it's used in Scream Queens, and yeah, I will I will never not love hearing that in, in something. And I think... That might be, a yeah. And there was one part. Ah, no, that's a that's a spoiler. I'll just say there's some, yeah. The music is really, really good. Really, you know, it's it's catchy. Some of it is really meaningful and just, yeah. Now, yeah, the the sound design is is quite good, which is of course um, important for like. The, the suit is all visual effects and sound design. There's nothing else. You know, it's not the, the kind of thing where, oh, well, there's at least this physical, you know. Because, no, the, the suit is alien, you know, which, sorry, Uncle Rudy, I know you do not like that word, and I respect that. It's extraterrestrial. The suit is extraterrestrial, so it shouldn't look like something that, you know, I, I understand that design choice, it does mean that there's no other, you know, so, so yeah, 
the sound design is very important and they do a good job with that it always felt like because you know otherwise you're just looking at like oh you know I want a sword or I want a gun and it's like it's just if all we're doing is, is seeing the transforming, you know, if there's not like this really, if there's audio that makes it seem like, oh, it's actually real, you know. And the, yeah, so the, the movie without end credits is two hours, pretty much to the minute and there is seven minutes of end credits so yeah and let's see yeah and you know I don't know if I would recommend walking out you know I feel like that's probably rude in a movie theater um you know if you're watching this at some point in the you know Maybe you're the only person in the movie theater, or maybe you're watching this, you know, down the line on DVD or streaming or something. If you give it at least 30 minutes to, to hook you, if by that point you just don't, if, if you don't care about what happens with the family, if you don't care about if Jaime ends up feeling like he, he you know, accomplishes what he, you know, if he, yeah, his his angst. If you don't care care about that, you can go ahead and turn the movie off. It's not. Let's see and let's see. So so yeah. Um, the best elements. You know. Uh, so yeah, it's probably a tie. You know, more diversity in a still too white subgenre. Is great the the performances the chemistry like the family you know just if they made more movies that were like primarily about the family I would watch that I'd go to the theater to, to spend more time with this family and yeah the the worst aspect is the the it just feels a tad too. I want to make clear to. I'm. I'm not saying like derivative. I'm not saying that there's some. It's just the fact that some of the stuff that it brings in is stuff that doesn't really feel like it should be in a movie today. You know, it's the kind of thing. You know, I. I saw one user review that said. Um, um, actually, hold on, I'll get the exact wording real quick. A true masterpiece if it had come out 20 years earlier. And, yeah, that's... Oh, there are now exactly 69 IMDb user reviews. How nice. And, uh, yeah, just the, the, yeah, that's, that's what, now I, yeah, the thing I was most worried about was how this was going to be able to make the jump between, you know, just a direct to streaming, you know, we technically own the property, we want to increase interest in the brand kind of thing, and then actually something that's, you know, up on the silver screen. And, yeah, it actually, it, it fares much, much better than I thought it might. And, yeah, um, you know, the thing I was most looking forward to was seeing this character who, like, you know, for sure, if you're big into DC Comics, which is, of course, considering that DC already stands for Detective Comics, DC Comics means, you know, Detective Comics Comics, which I think suggests that they're actually graphic novels 
dealing with very funny detectives. Yeah, obviously you know who Blue Beetle is, but a lot of, you know, the, I talked to a number of people about these movies based on comic books, and it was not the first time I had heard of Blue Beetle. I, I know I've heard Linkara express, you know, joy about some of the comics about Blue Beetle. Nobody I know who just goes to the theater to watch movies, even a lot of comic book movies, none of them had heard of Blue Beetle before. Everyone did a double take when I said, I'm going to watch Blue Beetle, you know, and yeah, I, you know, I'm really glad that Gunn is going to bring the, the character into the DCU also. It's just, you know, he's, he's such a, such a fascinating, yeah, right, I just realized, another thing is, like, when you see, like, the transformation, like, in addition, you know, in part, there's a very Cronenbergian thing there, and it's also fairly reminiscent of The Mask, like the Jim Carrey movie, you know, this thing of, it's taking over his body, and he's trying to, you know, remove it and can't and you know there's a lot of power exerted from the you know and it's just like you know the not gonna claim that the movie has aged that well when it comes to the you know jokes about the various you know there was a sexual there were some implications that you know, for some reason at the time we're seen as okay, and today we realize how completely unacceptable they are. Jim Carrey gives a, a good performance. The effects are pretty good. It's one of those, like, I, I've always said, the you know, you don't have to love the movies directed by Chuck Russell. But he makes, like, he makes movies that have a lot of special effects and where it actually works. It doesn't just feel like, oh, special effects, vehicle, you know. In addition to the mask, he's responsible for Nightmare on Elm Street 3, which, you know, a lot of people consider that, if not the best, at least one of the best ones. I stand by, I think he did a very good job on the 2002 Scorpion King. Uh, I know nobody else remembers that, but, yeah. Um, and he did, he did direct Eraser, didn't he? Huh. It's one of those, uh, you know, there's a, there's a corny joke in there about how it's about, you know, people not being able to remember things, and I don't remember that movie all that well, but, but, you know, these other movies that I mentioned, you know, yeah, like, there's a lot of, a lot of special effects movies, where the direction is not that good, and that's, I've never had that experience with a Chuck Russell movie, but, yeah, you know, I'm not saying that The Mask itself, on the whole, is a bad film, but when it did that, when it did the thing with, oh, you know, The Mask is, like, covering his face, and he's, like, clawing at it, and nothing's happening, he's, like, screaming, and, you know, like... That was different. That wasn't something we'd seen a million times before. And, and, I mean, I don't know if we've seen it a million times, but, like, to see it again today, you know, what, like, almost 30 years after that movie? It just feels like... Because I don't think that it really does enough new stuff with it to make up for that. You know, I don't think that it's... Pro it's, it's not a problem to do something in a movie that has been done in an earlier movie. It's just that you have to really put your own spin on it. And with some of the things in this movie, they, they don't quite manage to do that. Now, the trailers do give at least a little too much away. Uh, but they do also give you a pretty good idea of what the movie is like. Uh, the cover and poster does not really give too much away. And it does give you... A good idea of what the movie is like. 
Now, on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm going to open it. To, it might have changed. I, I looked at this before watching the movie, but it may have changed. Here we go. On Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 77% from critics, which makes it certified fresh. 160 reviews, only 37 of them rotten. The average critic score is 6 Point forty, and with more than two hundred fifty verified ratings, the audience score is ninety-two percent. The average rating is four point five out of five. Led by Sholo Maraduena's magnetic performance in the title role, Blue Beetle is a refreshingly family-focused superhero movie, with plenty of humor and heart. And on Metacritic. It has a 61 based on 46 reviews, 27 positive, 18 mixed, 1 negative. And let's see. Um, yeah, so the one really negative, yeah, the one negative review which gave it a 2 out of 10 points it, yeah it criticizes the film's draggy middle act and points out some kind of forced writing and that's yeah it's definitely some truth to that now the user let's see user score is 6.0 Mixed or average reviews based on 43 ratings, 24 positive, 5 mixed, 14 negative. And wow. One of the negative ones says, without a doubt, worst movie of the year. So. That's preposterous. I'm going to, I'm going to. I could spend a while on that. Uh, let's see. One one negative review says it felt like a Power Rangers flick. That I wish I could really completely go. Yeah. Um, one person said it was cringy. The script is the worst. There is some truth to that. Banal and corny plot. Yeah, definitely some. Now, that brings us to the IMDb rating, where it has a 6.9 out of 10 based on 4,000 votes. 27.2% gave it a 10 out of 10. 17.8 gave it 7. 16.4 gave it 4. 8, sorry. 8. 9.8 gave it 6. 9.1 gave it 1. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I really think that, like, giving it a 1 out of 10 is just completely ridiculous. The, the idea that there's not a single good thing. I think I think some of the the 10 out of 10 votes may be people who are just so happy to feel seen. I I don't it's subjective, you know. And if like if you're voting something high because you're really happy, I'm I don't want to take that away from you. Um yeah, I've I've said what I had on it. Now, 7.9% uh, gave it 9, 5.4 gave it 5, 2.6 gave it 4, 2.0 gave it 3, and 1.9 gave it 2. And the... let's see... That brings us... Um, hmm. 
there we go. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I rate this seven alien bugs giving superpowers out of ten. And yeah. Um, you know, this has already gotten pretty positive reception on various, you know, yeah. Like, you know, I mentioned, you know, okay, the user score on Metacritic is 6.0. That's not that bad for a movie that some people just despise, you know. The, the you know, there's, there's other stuff that has a way lower rating, you know, so clearly a lot of people have been very, very happy with this. I do think that it is a movie that in the future, you know, once a number of people have been de-radicalized and can look back at this and and not just be trying to, to spot things that they politically disagree with, yeah, you know, the the they're more likely to I th I think it might get a a positive reevaluation. And let's see. Yeah. Um Yes. So, my updated ranking, these are all the DCU movies worst to best. I love Shazam 2 and all I mentioned after that one, Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman 1984, Snyder Cut, 2016 Suicide Squad, 2017 Justice League, Man of Steel, Black Adam, Shazam 2, The Flash, Blue Beetle, Wonder Woman 1, Aquaman, Shazam 1, Birds of Prey, 2020, and 2021 Suicide Squad. And that brings us to the thoughts section. So I'm going to start with thoughts that I had notes taken during while watching is what I mean. So there we go. Yeah. And as usual on the paper and yeah so the logos and the opening are blue beetle tech forming and and you know disappearing and reforming and such after we have the the scene that we of course have to have with you know I've been waiting for so long I know it's here I can't wait any longer you know just that really, that was not the best way to start, because holy crap, that was, yeah. But we do, you know, it is, I've, I've often said that not everything, it doesn't have to be the case every time, but a very strong opening to your comic book movie like a very logical way to open it is a very strong introduction to you know it, it's great if you can do both but otherwise either the hero or the villain so that for the rest of the movie we have that to compare everything else to you know and it, it's not only comic book a, you know anything that has a very clear good guy and bad guy it can work really really well there's a number of westerns that open with the bad guy doing something really unspeakable or the good guy you know shown in a situation that you know it may not show his virtue but it'll show how good he is with a gun or something you know and yeah this is you know we get a sense of Vicky and Igna Ignacio and I appreciate the bright colors of the opening titles as they show the power of Blue Beetle. And yeah, we get a number of newspaper headlines. Wow, I remember newspapers. As they help explain some of the backstory. And it's, yeah. 
Did, do you think anybody in a comic book story, like, wonders, does this, does this seem familiar to anybody else? Because it's always, like, every time there's a big corporation, there's always this thing of, you know, oh, they discovered a thing, and then the thing, you know, someone, there's some kind of power grab, and, and someone went missing, and this is, yeah. And, yeah, you know, we meet the family at the airport, and they're so sweet from right away, and just, yeah, absolutely love them from, from right away. I, I, I have to admit, I am not the biggest fan of George Lopez. I, you know, I'll admit, like, most of, I, I, it's pretty much, like, he has a reputation as someone who steals other comedians' jokes, which, like, you know, if you don't know how competitive a field it is, that might seem like, oh, you know, whatever, I've retold someone else's joke. Yeah, but that's, it's, it's their livelihood, you know, and, and, like, if he struggle if he can't come up with good jokes himself, maybe instead of stealing, he should be doing something other than telling jokes, you know. The, the, yeah, but the, you know, that's one thing. And, yes, somehow I managed to sit through the adventures of Sharkboar and Lava Girl once, and he's really not very good in it. Even Like, I I get what they're going for, for sure, and I appreciate, I've, I, I really, really respect any, any, I, I don't know if I want to call him an actor, but anyone who's willing to get on camera and just really ham it up which was clearly what Rodriguez wanted for the, the character, you know, but just, yeah, I, I don't think it works, and, you know, it's it's down to Lopez and Rodriguez, both. But, but yeah, so he's, you know, he's the conspiracy nut of the, the family, you know, he thinks there's cameras everywhere, and he's certain there's a bug in the balloon, so he, he gets rid of it, just... And yeah, so me, um, Milly Milagro is not does not love the idea of building up to telling Jaime, but yeah, you know, she she tells him the truth that they are losing the house. The rent has been tripled, and you know they have three months to to get out. And you know this is. A very unpleasant thing to to think about, but this is something that happens a lot. It doesn't only happen to to immigrant you know families, but it is you know it, it's something that especially hits the the poor, uh, you know. So yeah, yeah. We learned that Jaime was actually the first university graduate, and. Yeah, and, and, you know, Milagro refused to, uh, you know, well, let's see, what did they say? She refused to even, she, she you know, she chose to not participate. I, f I forget the exact phrasing, but yeah. And, you know, the father leaves a 20% tip, uh, you know, the, the, just so such so sweet, such a sweetheart. You know, noting, I mean, they don't make a lot of money either. And yeah, and they they say animo. And yeah, Jaime, and, you know, he doesn't want the family to get more into debt. And it's this thing of you know, I mean, he got a high he uh, high, he got a college degree. And it was like law school, or like, you know, under the right circumstances, someone can really make bank with that. So, like, literally, what else is he supposed to do? He can't. He's done everything right. You know, he worked hard. He he chose a degree that's valuable and can make you a lot of money, can get you jobs. You know, but it still didn't work, you know, and that's, again, that's, you know, that's something that conservatives don't like about this movie. It points out 
that the American dream really is almost unattainable for huge swaths of, of people. And, yeah, you know, the, the family don't get the benefits of, of progress. I, I, you know, it's, it's very nicely done with the thing, you know, they can see the big buildings off in the distance, but it just, you know, and, and the contrast between the, the, you know, and that's something I think the director and cinematographer do a fantastic job on, just, you really get a sense of the, the, you know, the way that these two worlds, you know, you might be able to see into one from one of them, but they never directly touch. And it is kind of fun when he, you know, it's too bad they gave the gag away in the trailer, but when Jaime imagines being rich, and then Milagro is like, so, wanna come help, you know, scrape off the, the gum from the, just, yeah. And he, you know, he points out, you know, I have, you know, how am I supposed to get experience when no one is hiring? You know, and that's the thing. Uh, you know, it's it's such a, like, if you don't, essentially you have to know someone. You have to have some contact that will hire you despite the fact that you don't yet have experience. Because, of course, you're not going to be able to get work experience if everywhere you go tells you, that they won't hire someone who doesn't already have work experience. How are you supposed to get it? You know, and again, doesn't only affect immigrant families, but it is something that, in general, you know, the poor struggle with. <laughs> and and she she sticks gum under the chair and you know says, "What? I'm keeping you know, I'm making sure we still have a job." Let's see. And, yeah, and OMAC is explained, and, right, and I appreciate the way, I, I meant to say this in the review, but the way that they'll every so often go back and forth between speaking English and speaking Spanish, which, you know, is true of many immigrant families. And Jenny does not want any weapon production at her father's company and let's see yeah and and the they have this thing where where like Jenny almost gets attacked by um, Ignacio and Jaime picks up that something, you know, the, the movie needs to introduce Jaime and Jenny to each other. You know, I, I remember, you know, I watched the trailer and I saw that he knew Jenny when he goes into the building and that's when he gets the, the burger box, which turns out to have the scarab in it. I kind of thought maybe they met some way in college or something, but no, he... You know, he comes in to try to protect her from Ignacio, which by itself I don't necessarily hate. Like it's it's pretty ridiculously contrived. That you know, because there it's a place that you know Jaime and Milagro are not supposed to be. But then she's like mad at him. She's like you know. I, what was it she said? I can I can take care of myself or something like that. Now I think I get what they're doing. Basically, like she's a character who's had to fend for herself a lot. You know, not in the not in the same way. You know, because she's never been poor. But you know, her mother died when she was six. Her father has been dead for for some time now. So she's alone so she feels like she doesn't you know and it may be also you know they they wanted to to get across you know this sort of thing of you know 
I'm, I'm all for the empowerment of women. I think that's great. I think it was a little clumsily handled here. Because later in the movie, on multiple occasions, Uncle Rudy, who she has no reason to... Like, I mean, I guess it's a respecting your elders thing, maybe? But, like, Jaime... Like, I, does she not realize that um, Ignacio is also s already so far along with the Omen. Because she knows. She knows they're making weapons. I'm, I'm not saying that she should, like, I, I get why she's pushing uh, Vicky to stop. But the fact that she does, like, she seems like she legitimately does not. I mean, later on, when there's, like, guys with guns, she's completely accepting that that's, Okay, but, but yeah, you know, later on when she, you know, Rudy, he keeps calling her sweetheart or some, something like that, you know, some, which, like, I, I realize that's not the same as, you know, trying to do this, like, knight in shining armor act. It just felt weird to me that they would have the character. I think, yeah, I think maybe they were worried like I do think that the fact that the power imbalance is kind of uncomfortable. This thing of you know, rich woman who's still like not she's not as powerful as as a man who's poor. Like it's it's a little you know. There's always uncomfortable power imbalances in superhero stories, sadly. But the, like the moment that you involve someone who isn't superpower, you know, basically. The, the only way to avoid it is for everyone to have ridiculous superpowers, you know, which I'm all in favor of. Um, in stories, too. But the the fact, just, if yeah, it felt very, very awkward, the, the writing there. I, I did not think that was quite, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and Jaime gets fired over being in an area that he's not supposed to and his sister's fired for using the the bathroom but Jenny does give Jaime her number and then he insta stalks her and sends the, the text message and that's also the thing like then the you know the next day when he's going in to, to try to get this job interview and he's like, I can't leave here without a job. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. You know, because his family needs that money. Then she seems like... Like she didn't even really know... Like... I don't know why... She was... Because, like... It, it felt awkward to me that they just went so, you know, I get, you know, she wants to get the the scarab out of there as quickly as possible. It just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It felt like awkward writing. And... Yeah, you know, the the father says, you know, th these things don't last. Uh, you know, we're on a journey. Yeah, yeah, things don't last. Family does. We're on this journey together, and that's what's important. I saw someone else who said that they thought that was, like, that the movie pushed that too hard. I have no, like, the only thing I can think of is that they, they're so used to watching bad movies that don't do a good follow-through I really didn't think they hammered it home too uh, like I was I read that before watching the movie and I was thinking oh I guess they're gonna but they really don't like they introduce it here early on and then near the end they they you know fully deliver on it it's not something that's just like constantly yeah Let's see. and and yeah you know they talk about the search for purpose which again I don't think was badly handled in the movie.
and yeah, the family are so supportive. They, you know, they show up. They, they, you know, all of them. Like you can understand. Oh, he needs, you know, a lift or something. But they didn't all need to come. You know, they all came to show support, and they even chant his name. Which, yeah, that's the kind of thing that, like, yeah, um, this kind of cringy, yeah. Let's see. You know, and, and intentionally so. And Jaime is mistaken for a delivery person, you know, which, like, really just tells you... Because, like, look at what he's wearing. He looks like... Prof like, he looks professional. He looks like he's there for a job interview. But this woman... You know, I, f I feel bad for the actress. Because some people are probably going to think that she actually, you know... Brianna Quinn Lewis, who plays the cord receptionist. You know, I can imagine, in real life, she's, you know, she might be a very, very nice person. Uh, but, but yeah. Um, the, the... Um, what's the word? You know, she, she takes one look at Jaime... And, you know, she's like, there is not a single Latino working here. This must be a delivery person, you know. And, you know, he he introduces uh, himself as Jaime uh, um, Reyes. And then she calls him Jamie, which, you know, at first it's like, oh, maybe it's like, you know, she misheard or something. Maybe she's stressed or something, you know. But then she does it again, after he corrects her, and that's when you know, oh, this is, you know, she knows she can get away with doing it, so she's going to, you know. And I, I do respect, you know, the, the, I wish it weren't so, but there are a number of white women, you know, white men, white, white people in general, who can be very racist, and, yeah, she's, she's basically a Karen, you know, she, she sees someone who does not look like her and responds in a very particular judgmental way you know and yeah you know I don't like criticizing women but this is something that that is an issue that needs to be dealt with and I appreciate the movie you know I would I would have an issue with it if all the women in the movie were you know negatively depicted but Jenny is you know quite positively depicted. Nana is a straight, just badass. You know, Milagro can be annoying, but, like, there's clearly something, you know, she's not, like, just cold-hearted and, and cruel. Uh, you know, like, if, if the only women in the movie were Vicky Cord and the receptionist, then I'd be like, okay, this is kind of misogynistic. See. But yeah, you know, he very much gets second class treatment. And let's see. Yeah, you know, she manages Jenny manages to find and grab the, the beetle. And you know, the, the um I'm gonna get his name right, even though Vicky, like, legitimately never does, even after his death, which was kind of a dark joke. Dr. Sanchez. Um, you know, the, the, yeah, he, he discovers that the beetle is gone, you know, picks up the phone, lock the building, and, yeah, that's when Jenny really does need to, to get, to, you know, if they catch her with with a small box, that, like Jen, uh, uh, not Jenny, and uh, Vicky is definitely gonna be like make her empty her pockets. You know, there's definitely you know, so she has got to get it out of the building, and yeah, you know, she gives it to to Jaime, who is like, you know, you said you'd do anything, which you know, that's 
So she was, see, she was paying attention. She might have seemed like she was being a, a rich douche, just ignoring a poor person. She heard every word. <laughs> Aren't you glad? Just, yeah, you know, and, and as soon as he's walking out, you know, he is walking out the building. And then, you know, the guards come, and Jenny's there, and she's like, you, follow, you know, follow me. Because she's, you know, because then it's, then no one is wondering, like, why were you so close to the exit when the alarm went off? What's going on here? It's like, no, what? No, I, I came here since you would come here so we can go deal with this. You know, just, that's a, yeah. She suddenly doesn't look guilty at all. <laughs> and then, you know, he, Jaime insists that they just leave the, the burger thing there. And the others chant, open it. I, th I think it's open it in Spanish. You know, the, the subtitles translate as open it. And then they play a game of keep away. <laughs> like, it's just, you know. Latino families are, are just so, so heartwarming. You know, I, I, it's, it's that thing of, you know, like, sadly, of course, doesn't always happen, but it is that thing of when when things get really bad sometimes that really makes people care deeply about the person close to them Let's see. and yeah I quite appreciate the body horror of that first transformation you know like so just you know, at, at first it's like on his hand and it's like crawling and it like, it's, oh, I think it likes me, you know, face hugger and, and like the, the, am I remembering it right? It, there's like a light and energy coming from like, it, it's almost, it's like it's splitting his head. And, and Rudy tries to like rip it off and there's like light, electric you know electricity you know spitting forth from it and just yeah that was and <laughs> one of the first things that Kajida says is host overreacting which I mean that is definitely one way to tell the audience no legit like it's not just like you know, cl clearly there is sentience here. This is not like, oh, it's, you know, it can scan things. No, it has opinions. You know, that's that's not just this objective evaluation of events. Host overreacting, considering what she was putting him through, that's, that's a, that's an opinion. That's like your opinion, dude. And, yeah, we, you know, um, we learn that Rhea, uh, Rudy does not trust cops, so he doesn't want them to, to call any, and, yeah, turns out Jenny is single, you know, I, I did, that was pretty fun, when she, like, oh, he, yeah, he's been, he's been stalking her on Instagram, Ooh, turns out she's single, and he's like, wait, is it, she's single? What? How do you know? Uh, you know, I was looking at your phone. Give me back my phone. You didn't lock it. I don't know if that's a Latino thing. That might just be a sibling thing. Before you get mad at me over using your personal thing, I just want to. I just want to note it for the record. You did not hide it in a place that I could not personally get to it. That's that's a that's a sibling thing. That's not that's a fairly universal sibling thing, I believe. <laughs> I really appreciate the family trying to welcome Jenny. Like, do you want something to drink? Hey, Jenny. Just like so so nice. Just you know, I I think I. Th is, is Rudy maybe still, like, oh, she's one of the chords, she's one of those, but other than that, like, the, the rest of the, because, you know, basically, 
Jenny is now a potential future wife of Jaime. So Jaime's father, mother, and grandmother all they're you know they're trying to you know make a, a positive first impression on her and like they want to try to figure out is she would they be good for each other kind of thing and that's yeah and yeah and we you know um vicky briefly talks about how you know ignacio was broken before the procedure and let's see um hmm. oh right right the, yeah and and um yeah rudy has this thing that can you know force the you know yeah like i guess disable the cameras and have all the feeds show this like you know, Latino TV stuff, and like the one Latino guard working there is like, oh yeah, I remember that from when I was a kid. Just it was, it's silly but amusing. And let's see. Yeah, and and we see there's this picture that Vicky had taken with a bunch of children from like ethnically diverse backgrounds and Jaime says she looked so different I guess I I gotta say the moment that I saw it I thought they were doing the thing of pointing out you know just because a powerful person has their picture taken with uh, you know disadvantaged people doesn't mean that they actually care about them but I guess they were doing the thing where she used to have a heart and then after a while yeah and yeah so we get some Jaime versus Ignacio action which is pretty good and yeah for a while Jaime really struggles to get Kajida to not kill Ignacio but then you know later on I, and I thought that was a, a nice arc you know I I like the idea of an arc for the for the suit, uh, you know, AI. I I don't I don't remember there being that. And you know, it's not the first. Like, there's sort of an arc. I, I I'm sure they'd love for us to refer to it as an arc, in in the first Venom. You know, I I I don't know if I feel comfortable referring to it as an arc. It doesn't feel earned. But this is the only one where it's like, no, but it was the, you know, it's essentially like a, a suit AI, you know, and yeah, you know, at first it's like, nope, let's kill him, let's kill him. Can I kill him? Please, can I kill him? Now can I kill him? And, it's, you know, and, and by the end, you know, she points out, we are not murderers. Let's see, and is there a thing there? Because, like, so, okay, she used to be attached to this white dude, and I guess he didn't have a problem with them killing, and then in comes the Latino man, and he's like, no, we should not be killing, and she's like, are you sure because like I used to work for this white guy and he was pretty happy to kill me that's I'm probably reading too much into it but it just it's it's <laughs> there's a certain historical precedent for for that I'm, I'm not saying that like you know Latin American people have never done anything wrong or anything anyway and um, let's see. Yeah, and we learned that Jenny was very lonely as a kid. And 
Yeah, and, and Jenny recognizes that Jaime's house, family, and love is better than a house of stuff. And, you know, that is, of course, that is very, very corny to have the rich person look to the poor person and say, if only I had, you know, I, I live here surrounded by my material possessions. If only I had love, you know, it's very, very corny. I respect the movie for playing it so straight. And it is, you know, it is actually, you know, it's it sucks that it's corny. Because it is true. It is better to have a house full of love than a house full of stuff. <laughs> and Rudy is really... His timing is not ideal. <laughs> And and yeah, Rudy says, I don't I don't really like the word alien. It's it's okay. You can use it. It's, uh, you know. And I it's seriously I respect that you know the the yeah like the, you know he's been called an alien so many times. Let's see and yeah, uh, Jaime is very frustrated so. Rudy talks to him and, you know, explains, you know, yeah, crossing the border was tough, but the 20 years after that were also really tough. And the family are attacked by Vicky Cord. And that's also, you know, there's a lot of, you know, comic book movies where the family is attacked. You know, one or more family members of the superhero, superpowered person uh, attacked. Here, I actually really, really care. That's there's a lot of them where that's not the case. And yeah, you know, really devastating seeing this this house full of innocent people breached. You know, these these not like pineapple grenades, but like. What they call, I guess, flashbangs or something thrown and guns pointed directly at people's heads. You know, that was, yeah. And they open fire on people that they know have done no wrong. And, yeah, and, and the, you know, M Millie and the, the father are attacked and just yeah really really unpleasant to to look at and the let's see yeah and then you have the the claw and you know uh, unable to to get away and the father goes into cardiac arrest, just really, really, yeah. And and we see the, the family, you know, hoping that he can be saved and, and really devastated when not. And really great when, when Nana says, we have to help Jaime. And... Let's see. Right, the yeah, so we see the the Ted Cord um Blue Beetle ship and the entire family use. That was really, really great. And you know we see that Milagro loves the power glove. It's so bad. And Nana with the Gatling gun and, you know, hints at her revolutionary past and later on she she yells, you know, um, death to the imperialists, which is just awesome. And, yeah, 
the family goes to rescue the hero. It's usually the other way around in these movies, so I really appreciate that. And <laughs> and the the big blue beetle ship, uh, you know. For once, it's the bug that squashes the man. That was that was a great, yeah. And we get a progress bar, and we see the enough Omax for an Omac army. Omacrame. Macrame. And yeah, you know, Jaime sees his father. There's a lot of candles. Like, I guess once you're dead, you don't worry about, like, fire hazard, because it's like, what are they going to do? Double kill me? And, yeah, you know, he says, this is your purpose. My purpose was to help you find your purpose. And, uh, you know, yeah, very sweet, and he gets the, the strength to, to fight back. And, yeah. Once the, once at 100%, Jaime, you know, let's see, yeah, he get he gets out and we get the transformation, and I really like that the, let's see, oh, hold on, huh, okay, it's a, right, he says his name was was never Sanchez, and she kept saying it wrong. Uh, yeah, before when I called him Sanchez, that was because that's what the that's what he's referred to in the um, what's it called the the um, huh yeah both both IMDb and Wikipedia refer to him as as Sanchez, but yeah. You know, in the movie, he says what his actual name was, and she's been getting it wrong this whole time. And, yeah, part of why he fights back against Vicky is that she continuously, consistently disrespected, you know, him and his culture. And the suit is rebooting for a while, which... Yeah, that, I mean, they, they kind of had to come up with some, you know, because it's, instead of just having the fight, and, yeah, really, really cool seeing Nana use the Gatling gun, and the beatdown to Latino, set to Latino rap, that was awesome, really, really loved that. And Jaime does the get over here. So yeah, we we got a Mortal Kombat fan on our hands. And I I appreciate that. Ka, ka, ah, hold on. Her name, Kajida. You know she's now starting to to learn some Spanish because uh, you know that that was a great little you know. And yeah, and yeah, so we get the rematch, and now you know Ignacio is at full power, and he fights Jaime, who makes an anime sword, you know, one of those that it's like, okay, technically, apparently, some people have had swords similar to that in real life. But to me, that's an anime sword. It's just, it's so impractical. And I don't know why you'd ever make it in real life. Oh, pff, sorry. I get it now. Because it's friggin' awesome. And, yeah, and we learn, you know, Vicky felt abandoned by family. So, literally. <laughs> and see, that's, like, it's so corny. The good guys are good because their family loves them and they love their family. And the bad guy is bad because her family never loved her. 
And Ignacio becomes good when he remembers the love he felt for family. You know, so it's like, just... It has the same, this is, this is what you would get in, like, a Saturday morning cartoon. Like, you can see how this would be, like, you know, the, the big finish would be Jaime standing against, uh, you know, Vicky saying, I know you think that my weakness is my love. For my, you know, my, my family. And he, you know, he indicates they're standing there. But they, they are not my weakness. They are my strength, you know. And just, yeah, it's, it's, I seriously respect this movie for, for allowing itself to be that corny and cheesy. You know, it's one of those things, like, you know what, if, if we stop shaming corniness and cheesiness, maybe we'll start to remember a lot of the stuff that's corny and cheesy. It's because that there's a lot of truth to it. You know, it's it's this like God. I really hope at some point we in the West get better at just feeling our feelings, just accepting that certain things feel certain ways. You know, you don't have to seem cool all the time. I've always hated this. Since I was a child, I thought, like, why are we pretending to be robots? And not in the fun way. You know, why are we acting like we don't have feelings? So I really respect this movie. I, I hope more like it will, uh, you know. Let's see. Yeah, and... and <laughs> so... You know, she she got the chewing gum, put it in her mouth, and chewed enough to, you know, and it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't know, I guess she chews enough gum that Vicky doesn't think twice about, you know, she's not used to something that powerful being, like, chewing gum. And they actually do. Like, I was, as I was watching it, I was like, oh, like in that other movie. And then they actually do, you know, red light. Green light, and you know, down goes the neon copter. Like that's I. It at, at that point, okay, I it's got to be an intentional reference. You know how how do you get that close if it's not an intentional reference? So that's uh, yeah, and that is a great movie. So good to reference it. And, yeah, now uh, Kajida stops Jaime from killing Ignacio, and we see these really horrifying memories of the war crimes that he suffered. Which, again, you know, a lot of American conservatives who cannot handle when people discuss the horrible things that... You know, not necessarily them, but, like, maybe their ancestors did, or at least supported doing, you know. And, again, like, if you don't like that the thing happened, maybe you could take action to try to prevent it from happening again. Instead of getting mad at people who point out that it happened and that it was bad that it happened. You know, I, th I feel like this movie does a really great job. Like, I don't think it... I don't think it's necessary to... But this movie does really make a great case for why we should tell stories that aren't just about white dudes. Because this story would be completely different if it wasn't about immigrants. It wouldn't hit anywhere near as hard if it was just poor white people. And, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, after Ignacio has said, you know, your, your love of your family makes you weak. You know, he says, take care of your family. I remember everything now. And, yeah, you know, he overloads... 
the the generator taking Vicky with him and that is a massive explosion like they barely made it out of there like I don't wanna like obviously this was a very meaningful act for Ignacio so I don't wanna crap all over it but I do feel like it got real real close to like you know smash cut and you know he Jaime's father and Jaime are you know all in the afterlife and Ignacio is like okay I really thought that there was enough distance I am sorry I did not realize how close you guys still were and actually yeah the entire family were on the 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 vehicle just like ridiculously yeah but you know thankfully that wasn't the case you know with with just enough time left they did get to the chopper and yeah um we see that you know Jenny got control of the company back and let's, oh right so, and yeah and before that you know Jenny and this is a this is a very, very special privilege not everybody you know she gets to cry with the rest of the family I'm, I'm kidding obviously it is meaningful and what can I say I have you know internalized some of this fear of, of feeling the actual emotions I'm, I'm working on it anyway but yeah yeah we see you know she's back to running the corporation and she says you know no more weapons we're going to build we're going to give back to the community which yeah really really great and we see you know everyone in the neighborhood comes to help the Reyes family and Jenny is going to fix and give back the the house and uh, Jaime walks Jenny to her bike and yeah she's going to uh, you know go to her father's old place and the the um, you know she wants to she wants to look at the paintings that her mom uh, made made I think not just bought I, I think you know because she had forgotten how, how nice they were and that is legitimately sweet and then of course you know Jaime is like so can I give you a ride maybe I could give you a lift after that and you know just as I thought oh there's you know I guess that you know it's for the audience to draw that final conclusion but nope I mean, I guess the kids are not going to understand. It's going to go right over their heads. They are, their reflexes are not fast enough to catch it. But Kajita actually says, Jaime, I'm detecting a sudden surge of blood in your lower body. Which just, yeah. But, but yeah. Um, that is it for the movie itself and yeah the the first the mid credit scene you know ted is apparently on you know or in i guess the computer saying you know whoever activated this please get a message to my daughter close the door i have said it a million times more importantly tell her i'm still alive you know which is a great hook for a sequel that I'm guessing we're not gonna get since they're gonna get into the DCU which you know that scene like ugh, if if this movie had been released before all this turmoil with the future of of DC movies that would have been so amazing and instead it's like that's kind of annoying that we're probably not gonna get the follow-up to just yeah and the 
post credit scene is the the TV show, some some more of that t children's TV show that um, Rudy was, um, what's it called? You know that yeah he he showed in instead of security camera feed. You know, and then we hear him saying, "Oh, that's so sexy," which he said several times when you know kicking cars and such to make them work. So yeah, uh, like I said in the review, I'm not like unhappy that I stayed through, you know, but yeah, I I don't think this was necessarily the the best. I, th I think it might have been a good idea to just really reward anyone who stayed through the end credits, but it might have been a thing where they didn't really, you know, they might not have really changed it since finding out the this whole thing of, you know, yeah, the precarious future. Now, um, let's see... Yeah, so I don't really have much else to say. Um, right, the, you know, one of the trailers, I guess the second trailer, you know, made made it clear that the immigrant protagonist is using superpowers to protect his immigrant family from the government who specifically target them to hurt him. So, you know, extremely relevant, really appreciate it. And, yeah, I don't really have any other yeah so um this is the end of the video hit me up in the comments let me know what did you think of this one are you hoping that you know I'm, i mean gun said that he will be in the dcu i guess are you hoping we'll see him soon uh are you hoping they recast him or anyone else you know, uh, Jaime, I mean, are, are you hoping that they find some way to work in Ted and, I keep blanking on his name, Dan Garrett. And, yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists that suggest a video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, one talking about my thoughts on the most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of Scream Queens, one for The Bear, and next week Ahsoka is hitting Disney Plus, so I will be doing a video on each episode of that basically as soon as I can after the episodes have have aired um and the the yeah i intend to after ahsoka has you know once once the entire show has had its run on disney plus i will probably do a weekly video talking about you know first week I'll talk about an episode of Droids and the next uh, one episode of Ewoks or maybe it's the other way around and that kind of thing until I've watched all of those I do a daily video where I talk about two episodes of the 90's animated X-Men show and yeah the, right and, and um, let's see most likely tomorrow will, or I guess today, depending on, anyway, I'm going to go to bed, and after sleeping and getting up, I'm going to do a video on the bear, and Sunday, I'm going to do a video on the animated segment from the Star Wars Holiday Special, which has been released you know, on Disney Plus, you can't find, at least here in Western Europe, you can't find the actual holiday special. The only segment of it that is up, uh, you know, which, from what I hear, makes a lot of sense that it's the only one, is this animated nine-minute segment, which is, 
you know, yeah. When you watch it by itself, it is titled The Story of the Faithful Wookiee. So, yeah, you know, pretty much at least every week, something Star Wars and Marvel. And that is it. So, uh, right, and, re and recently reviewing Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you're more videos like this, you're lucky. You can check out my back channels. Let's catch my movie next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time. And remember, we should all be fighting the imperialists.